Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Battalion Commander. Once again by SPL and some dev called Eerysoft. Funny story about this one, this one used to be a Flash game. Like, I'm pretty sure a lot of the games SPL have brought over to the Vita have previously been Flash games that they've ported to mobile and then ported to Vita, but yeah, I think Battalion Commander was originally a Flash game, so that's, that's kind of neat. So we'll go hit start and have a look, shall we? This is about an hour in and... I've done 17 of the missions, I've got about half the upgrades and a few perks and stuff like that. So we'll go have a quick look around at everything real quick. You can pick a power up, uh, the only two I've got unlocked right now are slow down time by a massive amount and send out a wave of death in front of you. You can get different weapons, but the only reason you'll ever like downgrade weapons is because you have to do a objective. Like um, one of the objectives I've got for example is use the, tool, the two pistols for three minutes. I'm not entirely sure what the point of that was, but there you go. You've got perks, plenty of different perks, like explosive load with napalm, you get in the car, you can move 20% faster, you can take extra damage, you throw your guys throw grenades, uh, I don't remember what this one is, explosives produce frags, that's actually pretty nice. You can pick up the four at a time, you unlock them as you go along. As you do objectives and get uh, experience from, um, from the levels themselves, you will get access to more upgrades. So you can buy things like extra allies. You can buy the ability to have them at the start. You can... Yep, more money more money and XP. I will always take that. The allies get the flamethrower and and the jackhammer. That's always nice. And 100% to the money and XP magnet radius. And different weapons, different skills. And you unlock more as you, as you go along. So yeah, I'm about halfway through. I've got half the upgrades. You earn money like crazy in this game. I've never not been able to afford an upgrade. You can't go here for the controls, but you don't really need to. There's a high score table for both the campaign and the endless mode. So if I just hit OK, we'll be able to see that I'm like at the top of the leaderboard. So yep, I'm at the top of the leaderboard. There I am. That's kind of nice. So yeah, I just saw a dev kit from SPL there. You can also check what missions you've got here. This one here, collect 1000 XP. I think it's bugged because it only counts XP that you pick up off the field. So unless they were trying to make it so that you get absolute ton of XP in the world, well, there you go. But yeah, team up with Grenadiers, run 1500 meters, launch Napalm Wave, last 150 meters without getting a single ally, yada, 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 yada. It all, it all makes sense. It's pretty simple stuff. So you also get more HP and more people on your team as you go along. Let's just go to the campaign, shall we? You start on lap one always like there's you never don't start on lap one and the idea is that you just try and get along to the end as fast as humanly possible well not as fast as humanly possible because you move at a set rate you also don't use the fire button everybody fires automatically you break jail cells which you wouldn't have been able to see there because um the guy was already out of his jail cell by the time he came into view and you pick up more peoples and the different peoples can do different things like we've got a flamethrower a regular automatic rifleman and a marksman here the regular automatic rifleman just fires straight the flamethrower fires straight and obviously fires lots of flames and the marksman will shoot directly at an enemy like they will not um they won't like just fire straight forward they'll fire directly at them even if they're behind you so yeah that's the thing you can have as many on your team as you have available in the main menu. So I can probably ta I can take a long while. So nine people, which is a fair amount. And they've all got their own unique health bars. You've also got your own unique health bar. If you die, it's game over. But if they die, they just fall off. And you can just, you know, recruit another guy in their place. You can find health packs and stuff, which will give you, um, which will give you extra health for all your guys and of course you can also pick up money and stuff off the field for upgrades and xp your objectives you keep track of them up in the top right there and your ability you can fire using either any of the face buttons so if i press x for example i fire that off and one of my perks is i get a shield and this shield will protects me for a few seconds after I use my ability. So I can use it as a get out of jail free card if I absolutely need to. Flamethrowers do an absolute ton of damage in this game. It's retarded. 
Seriously, they do stupid amounts of damage. It's kind of annoying. Game's performance isn't really that great, in case you didn't notice. The game tends to drop frame rate a lot when it's loading new stuff in, like anything from new enemies to a new area type to, well, pretty much anything will cause the game to lag on load. Like, it is lagging really badly right now. Like, I am... I, I am keeping a very close eye. Whoops. Yeah, you can run into stuff and it can kill you instantly and that's kind of annoying. But there you go. You'll get a little bit of a summary and then you can just head straight back in. Which is nice. There's like zero load time to this game. Like, you'll be on the main menu within 10 seconds of starting the app and there's no load times after that. Which might be the reason why it stutters so much when it decides to load in new stuff. But there you go. You do have access to a melee attack if you get up up close and personal, but considering that getting up close and personal means you might end up running straight into something that might kill you instantly on touch, you probably don't want to do that. The game itself is actually pretty enjoyable though, all things considered. Like, it is a relatively fun idea, just scrolling along, firing along tons of bullets and just destroying everything that's in sight. It'd be nice if you actually stood more of a chance against things like towers. Like, I legitimately don't understand why when you run into a tower, you lose all your health instantly. I'm not entirely sure what they're going for with that, but it's really annoying. But when you're not just blundering into absolutely everything, you're usually you're doing fine. You've got... It, there's a lot of bullets on screen at any one time, and the actual bullets don't cause slowdown in and of themselves, which is nice, because... You would expect them to, but they don't. And I'm not entirely sure why it's the seeming loading of stuff more than anything else that causes it, but uh, apparently it does. I'm not entirely sure why. And there's a fair bit of stuff to do, as you saw uh, on the main menu with all the different objectives and stuff to do. I haven't actually earned any trophies in this game, because all the trophies in this game are actually, like, really out there objectives, so... It's kind of nice, really. There is also the ability to ride around in the APC, and once I've died again, I'll hop into... Not the APC, the, um, the Jeep. And once I've died, I will hop into the Jeep, and I will show you what the Jeep looks like. I haven't actually tried it myself, but, you know, I'm more than willing to give it a shot on camera for the good of the nation. No story or anything like that, which is nice. You know, just get the fuck into it. Don't bother with our pointless plots, which is... Alright. It really does remind me of a, um... Of a freaking Flash game from the mid-2000s. Like, you know, going to Newgrounds or Congregate or Mini Clip or... Oh, man, I'm just having a nostalgic asm right here. Like, there, there's this one game, the name I can never remember of, and it's like a ninja in a Japanese sort of place where they um where it's like an rpg with turn-based combat where you can learn all sorts of different abilities and stuff i never remember the fucking name of it and every time i think of, of flash games i think of this one game that name i can never remember and it's the most frustrating thing in the goddamn universe it's a nice game just to sit down and just fuck around with like i was playing this during the game awards as, um, just because I had basically nothing else to do at the time, and I wanted to get these two games out of the way so I could play, um, I just want to stay out of the way of that car. I was playing the two games, because, um, well, this and, um, The Keeper of Four Elements, because I had nothing else to do at the time. But, um, the thing is that this game is actually pretty fun to play just by itself. Like, as a distraction, you know, I... Saying it's good to play by itself is actually, like, really inaccurate compared to what I actually wanted to say. Because I'm an idiot. But yeah, it is fun to play just by... Just by being a distraction, really, against whatever else you're doing. It's very quick to pick up and play. You can have a couple of games in a few minutes, and it's just fun. So, uh, that's the shrapnel, that's the grenades, that's the shield, that's the body armor. Yeah, I'll unequip that. And I'll start the game in the car, and we'll go play one more game. And there is an endless mode, so if you want to do, like, score attacking or anything like that, well, there you go. Okay, so I've got an automatic rifleman, and apparently I've got health on this car. Yep, I do not want to run over the freaking barrels, apparently. I wonder what happens if I run over, like, a turret in this car. It immediately explodes. Okay, that's unfortunate. 
So there's a little bit of roadkill going on there. Normally for a, like a $9.99 game, I'd be like, this probably isn't worth your time. But the thing is, this game's $2.99, just like the Keeper of Four Elements, which I, if I, you know, spread my videos out correctly, I put a video up on yesterday. So, I mean, for $2.99, you can do a fair amount worse on the Vita. Then again, you couldn't really do much at all on the Vita for $2.99. But, you know, for... If it's something that you might just have a couple of bucks left over in your wallet after buying a retail game or something like that. This is... Seriously, this is not bad. I mean, they could do to fix the performance problems and maybe make it so that you don't instantly die when you run over a, um, a stationary turret or whatever. But those are like minor gripes. Also, maybe make the flamethrowers a lot less powerful because seriously, they're ridiculously powerful. I probably want to take this place out before they start spawning too many guys. There we go. And screw the tank. Get an automatic rifleman. There's a couple of hours worth of content with uh, upgrading all your stuff and trying to get to the end. And then you've got the endless mode if you want to keep playing, which is nice. I mean, for $2.99, you can't really expect very much. And, well... It's not so much bare minimum, it's a fair, it's a little bit better than fair minimum for what I would pay like three bucks for. See what I mean by running into the tower will kill you. One more, it's only been ten minutes. One more game will do us. So yeah. While I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine to say that the game itself is perfectly okay and for the three bucks they ask you for it, it's alright for that. Fucking... Cars. At least I come out with a relatively strong army force, but there you go. Music's not great, and sound's not great either, but... There you go. I'm telling you, I just want to end this video, like, right now, because I have a copy of SD Gundam Generation Genesis just waiting for me to go and play it. Like, seriously, it's in this video right now. I just, I... I really don't have anything else to say about freaking Battalion Command. I forgot its name there for a second. <laughs> that, sure, that sure doesn't help, does it? But, really, it's not bad. If you're looking for something to do, and you just, you want something small, like seriously, this game's like 60-something meg. Compared to SD Gundam, which requires 3.1 gigabytes on your memory card, despite being a physical game. That's the very first video game to do that, if you really haven't been paying attention. Screw that tank, and kill everything else while I'm mostly invulnerable with melee attacks. That's fun. all the health kits blow up all the barrels avoid the flame troop uh, flame thing that just showed up down there I guess I'm just happy to say that there's nothing particularly wrong with it I mean it's not it's not particularly great but it's not particularly bad either which is a which is a good thing really like being able to just you know Sit back and play something that doesn't have any legitimate problems, even if it isn't particularly great. Well, that's fine by me. That was a quick look at Battalion Commander. It's alright. It's fun. It doesn't cost much. It's really small, and you can keep it around and just play it if you have absolutely nothing else to do. So, you know, that's not the worst place for a game to be. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.